from the Bahamas, colleagues in the psychological community in the diaspora, as well as the global psychological community. Our dear president has asked me to speak about the well, to provide an overview of psychology, the science, and the practice, and to also highlight just briefly some of the developments and activities related to violence. The idea is that after my presentation, we should have a sense of what, how one becomes a psychologist, but also we heard very early on from Dr. Cummings about all the things that psychologists do. So she's not here, but I'm hoping that you can recall some of the activities that she outlined, and hopefully my presentation will help you to understand how we are able to achieve those things. So let me start by saying that psychology is very much that psychology is very much a global discipline, one that began officially in 1879 in Germany. But in today's world, it is present in every country in the world. The growth has been absolutely phenomenal. Now, even though we have that growth in psychology, we also have growth, we have considerable diversity in our discipline, and on the left, side, I have highlighted some areas of that diversity for you, because while the focus is on clinical psychologists, it didn't stop my watch. While the focus is on clinical psychologists, clinical psychology is just one of many specialties in our discipline. We are an amazingly diverse discipline, and psychologists work in a variety of work sectors, in every sector of society, we work with different populations, and we engage in a range of professional activities. It's also important to note that not all psychologists are clinicians. So that's really important. We engage in such a wide variety of activities. And what I've done on this slide is just to highlight some of the more common specialties in psychology. I was speaking with a colleague um, who says, well, People usually understand the specialties in medicine. And so I would encourage you to think about psychology as being similar to medicine, where they might all be MDs, but they have different specialties, and it's the same in psychology. So specialty different, but we also are diverse across the world in terms of the state of psychology, its level of development. Some of the issues and areas of focus, theoretical perspectives are all very different. Even in the Caribbean, we have, as you heard from our president, presenters from Haitian-speaking, Creole-speaking countries, Dutch, Spanish, and English. So we have this wonderful task within CAMPA of integrating all of that because our educational traditions are different. Historical factors are different. Economic issues are different. So those same differences that characterize countries in the region also characterize countries in the global community with respect to the state of psychology's development. <coughs> now, the diversity is great. It makes psychology amazingly useful in all sectors of society, but despite that diversity, there is considerable unity in our discipline. And that unity in our discipline comes from several areas. The first area is absolutely the training. The training of the qualification required to be a psychologist. We've heard several comments about what it takes to be a psychologist, and on this slide, I've highlighted for you what is the global standard for professional psychology. In the Caribbean, in US, some places, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Pacific, the master's degree is the minimum criteria, the qualification. In other places, it is the PhD. But the master's degree is the minimum. Now, we also have considerable unit unity in terms of our ethical principles. All professions have ethical principles, and we are no exception. 
we have the Universal Declaration of Ethical Principles that was signed in 2008 by the global psychological organizations. We also have, each country has its own ethical principles. So I imagine in short order, Diana will be developing their ethical principles. Hopefully that will conform with the Universal Declaration of Ethical Principles for Psychology. You will see on this slide that as recently as last year, we have again approved the International Declaration of Core Competencies in Psychology. And that is absolutely critical because it lays the foundation for a coherent professional identity, but it also is hopefully going to lead us to an international recognition system for equating professional training all around the world. Now, the growth of psychology, as I said, has been phenomenal. And the, unit, the disciplinary unity and the impact can be attributed to many factors. One factor I'd like to highlight is the international psychology infrastructure. Remember I said that psychology got started in 1879 formally. Well, in 1889, that international psychology infrastructure began to develop with the first international congress in psychology that was held in Paris, France. And just in 2014, we celebrated the 125th anniversary of that conference. Now, there are today many international organizations of psychology, but I'll highlight just one, the International Union of Psychological Science which is the global voice of psychology. It is also that organization that grew out of that inaugural conference in 1889. IUCIS, what can I say about IUCIS? IUCIS is similar to CANPA in the sense that it consists of national members, not individual members. So all the members of IUCIS are national psychological association. So CANPA, IUCIS has approximately 90 different national members and multiple regional affiliates. I've added the regional affiliates for you so that you can see that through the international organization and the regional affiliates, there is amazing opportunity for collaboration at the international and regional level via conferences, capacity building events, scientific initiatives, networks and publications. I hope you notice that CAMP is there yeah. as an affiliate. And I'm hoping that you will appreciate that CAMP and Caribbean psychology occupies an important space in the global psychological landscape. I'm going to skip further organizational development because Dr. Nicholas is going to talk a little bit about camp and capacity building and living. Now, I would like to turn just briefly to violence. And I'd like to start by stressing that psychology has had a long history of work in the field of violence. When we look at the literature and our current understanding of violence, we can recognize that psychological science is really the foundation of what we understand about violence, its causes, its impact, and intervention strategies. As shown on this slide, the current conceptualization of violence by the World Health Organization is actually an adaptation of the ecological model developed by a psychologist. So you can see that we, our work has been reaching our international organizations with responsibility for promoting overall health and well-being. In addition to research and intervention on all types of violence across the lifespan and context, including violence from children, we know that our psychological scholarship has also reached out to the broader context and highlighting the impact of violence on global development goals. This is a slide from psychologist Bowman from South Africa, who did some work on how violence affects the development or affected the development of the Millennium Development Goals, now we're in the era of Sustainable Development Goals. 
So again, it points to the different roles that psychologists have been playing. As I said, of course we have that traditional research and scholarship, but we've been actively engaged in education and training, policy development, intervention program design, implementation, evaluation, and advocacy. And you can see, I've provided several examples on this slide for you. The first is a global initiative that started from 1997 where the focus was on establishing regional networks and centers for analysis, intervention, and prevention on psychological issues and violence. In 2013, the Psychology Coalition of the United Nations held its seminar on psychology and violence in the global context, Psychology Day at the United Nations, and the focus was across the lifespan that we spent particular attention on violence in the majority world. That is, particularly violence as it relates to children and their lives. The third item was more recent, as you can see, was in 2016, when Dr. Sachs Kupel, who is president of the International Union of Psychological Science, made a renewed and an urgent call for global collective action and regional focus by psychologists to address violence. On the right-hand side, I wanted to highlight that psychologists in the Caribbean have been doing considerable work in this area. And I've just highlighted three different examples of that work. Someone from Trinidad and Jamaica, Pico Bella with Carrie Mann. We have Dr. Zuri Amulero Marshall in the room, and she's done some wonderful work with the UN in evaluating programs for um, women. We also have, from the Bahamas, two of our male psychologists leading work group sessions on gender-sensitive and social skills training with young men. So you can see psychologists have really been engaged in violence, and these are just examples. I have on these two slides um, what I call the exemplar of psychological science um, application to gender-based violence. That's the Partnership for Peace pro um, project. Now, I'm not going to go through all of that, but I just want to highlight the second bullet that is both in bold, that the key focus was cultural adaptation of theoretical models to our Caribbean socio-cultural and psychological reality. And that is an important part of our work because it is key to understanding some of the issues that have been raised before. I think also Minister Cummings talked about post-colonial violence and the impact of the colonial experience. So it does require some adaptations to that which we have learned in our traditional university settings. Of course, the research is critical. We've heard many speakers speak about the importance of research, and this project, again, was a good example of quality research by psychologists. <coughs> I cannot forget the capacity building component. Now, on this slide, I've highlighted another development. I call it the era of global Caribbean and interregional collaboration in psychology. It's fairly new. It's fairly new for us, but it means that we are engaging systematically with the global community but also developing relationships with regions in other parts of the world. If you remember that slide where I listed the different regional organizations, CAMPA has been engaged with their conferences, their presentations. Several of us have just returned from, well, not just, in September from South Africa where the Pan-African Union of Psychology held their inaugural congress. So it's developing relationships to promote the exchange of knowledge to promote development across our communities. And on this slide, again, we have collaboration. In 2016, we had collaboration between CANPA and IUCIS with the meeting held by the United Nations on gender-based violence. 
And then, earlier this year, Dr. Ishtabaya represented Kanto and Ali Sayas, where we began to look at collaboration, international, regional, and national, to address some of those intersectoral challenges that you've outlined, so that we can achieve those sustainable development goals in the Caribbean. So finally, with this presentation, I hope I've provided just a brief overview of, I think Dr. Omawali called it blurbs, of what psychology is doing. So provided some information about the landscape and our engagement with the global community with some indication of what we're doing with violence. I have intentionally not addressed the topics of this symposium because for the remainder of the day, the psychologists who will speak will address that topic. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing to promote the um, overall well-being in all areas of functioning in the Caribbean with a view that we need to increase our relevance to the story of Caribbean peoples. And we also have a saying. We have a saying that says, the story of humanity is incomplete until the Caribbean component is added. And so our goal is to ensure that we're in that psychological story. Thank you very much.